Do you like cheese? Do you mayhaps even like mayonnaise? Well, then do I have the challenge for you. Hello, everyone. My name is Luna Fial, and welcome to my magnum opus, Dairy Percent, where you try to eat a piece of cheese and drink some mayo as fast as possible using the new farm and the 1.16 Stardew Valley update. Despite mainly being an Animal Crossing player, I've thrown my theoretical hat in the Stardew Valley ring many a times in some casual playthroughs. So I thought to myself, maybe I should try a speedrun of the game, but not like one of those on speedrun.com. I'm nowhere near qualified enough for one of those. Instead, I looked for some of the meme runs that I've seen that are a bit smaller and more niche than those like the mine runs or the marriage runs on speedrun.com. I watched Charlie Barley do an egg percent where you fling an egg at a hated NPC, and later she joined Therm for Milky's percent, which had the duo milk a cow, drink it, and then type yummy Milky's in the game chat, which was quite frankly genius and innovative. So the obvious next step was to expand on the past brilliance and capitalize on the fact that we can now drink mayonnaise. You may be asking yourself, how does one acquire said dairy products? Let me tell you, in total, we'll need 8,500 gold, 410 wood, 210 stone, an earth crystal, several copper bars, and 10 hardwood. Now that we have an objective and list of things we need to gather, I think all that's left to do is get started with a run. We started off strong with me struggling to spell words multiple times, including our farm name Dairy. Allow me to introduce Yogurt of Dairy Farm, our favorite thing you may ask, lactose. I turned on random mine rewards and selected the meadow farm, and then we were off to the races. I started out collecting our hay and greeting our chickens, potatoes, and gravy. I then worked on clearing out the debris in the chicken enclosure to be sure they always had plenty of grass. Then, I started freeing up space in front of our house for crops. I chopped enough wood to make a chest, then headed into town to buy seeds when I noticed a problem. You may be thinking to yourself, hey, that path isn't in vanilla Stardew Valley, and you'd be right. I still had Stardew Valley expanded mod enabled, so I had to restart the run. Attempt 2. Shake it off. Yogurt from Dairy Farm is back at it again. I grabbed the hay and immediately ran to our chickens, who are now named Eggie and Ollie. After some farm clearing, I made a chest once again and headed into town. The vanilla version this time. I stopped at Piers and decided that it may be worth it to complete a few community center bundles for the rewards that they would give me, mainly the spring crops and spring foraging bundles for some extra cash. I snooped through the garbage cans around town and cleared any fiber I could find, trying to find mixed seeds. After planting all my crops, I ended the day doing some foraging and came away with a good amount of spring onions. I woke up the next day ready to put my money-making plan into action. After getting more wood, I made a chest, pet the chickens, and ran as fast as my little legs would carry me to the beach, not forgetting to channel my inner raccoon on the way. After acquiring the goods, I knew that I was ready to make loads of money, the likes of which have never been seen. Yeah, I was just fishing at the lake. But I did come away with a good amount of fish before deciding to call it quits to save any energy buffs for the next day, as spring third always guarantees rain. Also, something I want to point out quickly is my constant inventory reorganizing. In a casual playthrough, I don't think it's that big of a deal, but there is a timer in the corner, Luna! Stop sorting the fish! We're trying to be speedy here! Let's go! Anyway, I sold the fish and went to bed, but I seriously gotta pick up the urgency a little. Day 3, I had a pep in my step because I didn't have to water my crops. I stopped into the coop to greet Eggie and Ollie and discovered not only were they full-blown chickens, but they had already laid eggs. I collected my gold from the Getting Started quest and spent even more time fishing. Early Stardew Valley doesn't have a lot of money-making options, making fishing easily one of the best uses of time. I ran home this day without selling fish as I knew I was getting closer to level 5 fishing, which would make the price of fish 25% more. The next morning, I watered my crops and then headed off to the lake, not without stopping for any dig spots or foraging on the way. I spent all day fishing again, but I hit level 5, so I grabbed as much fish as I could carry before heading home and choosing the Fisher Perk. I got jump scared by Clint the morning of day 5 who decided that fishing up ore meant that I needed a furnace blueprint. After that I sold all my fish and harvested my parsnips, then watered the rest of my crops in spaces that were now empty, as I wanted to buy more crops to fill in that space. I grabbed more eggs from the coop, mostly for the farm AXP. I then picked up my axe and used the time before Pierre opened to get more wood for a chest I could leave at the mines. I wanted to be able to collect all the goodies without having to pick and choose what to prioritize. On my way into town, I got the community center cutscene and skipped that before spending my cash on kale, which is one of the best spring crops for XP. I stopped into the community center and read the Junimo plaque before running home and planting my kale. I then ran to the mines where my goal was to get as much copper as possible and find an earth crystal. It was a good luck day, so I had no trouble making my way down and even found an earth crystal on 4th floor. I decided that floor 10 would be a good stopping point for the night when I ran into an infested floor 9. 
With only my rusty sword, this floor took an insanely long time to clear and I wasn't sure if I would be able to fight my way through before passing out for the night. Thankfully, I defeated the last slime and got a nice weapon upgrade for all my troubles. Nice. I decided that my time would be best spent getting started with smelting and gathering up as much copper as I could, passing out in the mines with a crate dropping a small magnet ring as well. I got level 1 farming, mining, and combat along with over 6,000 gold from all the fish that we had caught over the past few days. Day 6 started much like the others, watering the crops. I won't mention this at the start of every day now. You can assume that I'm doing this every morning unless we get lucky with rain. The same goes for petting the chickens. The 5 XP we get each day is something else that I'm making sure to do. I ran to the mines to grab the furnace and copper we had collected the day before. On my way back to the farm, I stopped at the fishing chest for any goodies or food that I could sell. I then chopped wood, broke rocks, and smelted ore on the farm. Once I was mostly out of energy, I grabbed the spring foraging and any extra leek or horseradish, then ran to the wizards, of course skipping the cutscene. Then I ran to the community center and found a Joja Cola and Emily and Haley's trash can, which I immediately drank for the little bit of energy and the speed boost. I donated the forageables, then went to Pierre's to immediately sell them. We don't need to worry about the foraging XP, otherwise I would plant these. I purchased seven potatoes, not six, not eight, seven. I wasn't sure why when reviewing the footage until I saw that my crop fields were seven wide. Again, I think this was the casual player in me because I definitely should have bought more and not cared about the aesthetics of our little farm. This is definitely something I regret later on. I spent the rest of the day collecting more wood and stone from the farm, turning any seeds I could into forage snacks. I turned in around 8pm and we got level 2 mining and almost 2500 gold. On day 7, I harvested the few potatoes that were ready and continued my efforts to collect the wood we needed to build the barn. At 10am I headed over to Robbins and after too careful of consideration for a speedrun, I had placed the structure down to be finished in two days. After that I made my way over to Clint so that I could get the copper axe upgrade started. I then decided making my way to the mines to continue the stone and copper gathering would be a good idea, and while I was killing some of the monsters on the floor, a bug dropped a monster compendium, which acts like a mini burglar's ring, giving monsters a chance to drop double loot. Super cool! When I ran out of energy in the evening and I didn't want to eat any more food, I headed back to the farm with as much goodies as I could carry and called it an early night. The next day I paid homage to my raccoon brethren and tried to find something exciting in the trash. I was really waiting for Piers to open so I could get more crops, but I found myself getting impatient, especially when Gus was able to enter the store before the 9am open. Once I got into Piers, I was finally wise enough to spend more money on crops. I think at this point it had finally sunk in that I was already almost 2 hours into the run and was only at level 3 farming if I was lucky, and I had to get all the way to level 6 farming. Back at the farm, I got to work hoeing enough tiles to plant my newly acquired kale and somehow still ended up with nicely organized rows despite not doing any calculations. At this point, I don't know if I should be proud or ashamed of that. After that, I just went to bed. When I woke up the next morning, I decided that it was Clint's turn to experience my patience, because he too doesn't open until 9am. After quickly waiting for his store to open, I grabbed my copper axe and was able to collect the much needed hardwood and normal wood to be sure that we'll soon be able to cross both materials off our list of requirements. Once I was satisfied with our total, I had an early night once again. The morning of day 10, Marnie was at my door with a cat, and I know in your typical speed run, it's fast to say no to the animal, but I could never. So I adopted the kitty and named it Cream to fit in with our dairy theme. After that, all I did was water my crops. I'm currently waiting for these to grow so that I can sell them to get money for our new cow and milk pail that we'll need. Before I headed to bed though, I made sure to pet our new friend. Day 11 was just a rain day, so it was a quick sleep and on to day 12. When I stepped outside the farmhouse the next morning, I was thrilled to see some of our crops were fully grown. I harvested what I could before heading into town and making a little detour at the beach to pick up any extra goodies I could sell. I decided that I was better off investing in more crops rather than our little cow friend for the time being, because we had only just made it to level 2 farming when I thought we were to be on that point. I planted our kale before finally making a scarecrow and then went to bed. On day 13, all I did was water the crops before going on to the next day. On day 14, we had a large amount of kale ready to be harvested, and I also went into the coop to collect the overabundance of eggs that were sitting in there. I got to work watering all the spots that were now empty, and got to Piers just as he opened to sell the crops, and invested in some potatoes and kale this time to spice it up, being sure to save at least 2500 gold so that we could pick up our cow that I aptly named Cheese, and a milk pail. Back at the farm, I pet the cheese, planted the crops, and put some hay in the barn and coop in case we got lucky enough for a rain day. When I went to bed, we got level 3 farming and a few hundred gold from some of the eggs that I sold. Day 15 and 16 were both very quick and the same thing. Water the crops, pet the cow, and go to bed.
Day 17 was more or less the same thing. We're at the point now where we're waiting on the farming level up and the cow to be able to produce milk. This time though, to keep things exciting, I put the chicken while refilling my watering can. At this point in the run, I started to wonder if I should have tried to get to floor 40 in the mine so that I could get sprinklers, as the only real way I could see getting the increase in farming XP that we needed would be through crops. But I also wasn't sure at the same time if the mines would be too long, so I just stuck it out and hoped that we would get the farming level up soon. The next morning, we had a ton of kale ready, easily pushing us to level 4 farming. I sold everything to Pierre, but when I tried to pick up some potatoes, I accidentally bought a bunch of tulips. I thought about restarting the day or selling them back, but I ultimately decided to just buy some kale and potatoes and run with the trifecta of crops I had now. Back at the farm, I prepped the spaces with more difficulty than others in some spots, realized how much watering I had signed myself up for, and then went to bed. On day 19, reality set in. If I wanted to get to level 6 farming, I was going to have to water this massive crop field until I got enough XP to make the cheese press. Instead of doing anything remotely productive, I checked my mail, then avoided my problems by going to bed, hoping for rain. I seriously considered banking on rain to get me out of watering the next day, but I knew if I let the challenge go on to the next season, that I would be losing out on a ton of XP from my crop field. So I sucked it up and got to watering. During this point in the run, our cow was also fully grown, so we were able to milk cheese to make, well, cheese. We were just waiting on the level 6 farming at this point. During my break to fill up the watering can, I grabbed a bunch of eggs from the coop, hoping that the 5 XP each that I got from the eggs would help me out in the long run. I even sold the eggs for no real reason, since we don't need money anymore, then went to bed. I was greeted by potatoes and kale ready to harvest on the morning of day 21, and that got us to level 5 farming. I watered the crops in empty spaces because I wasn't sure if the crops we had left in the field would be enough to get us to level 6. I sold everything once again to Pierre and bought 30 kale before once again planting and going to sleep. Day 22 and 23 were when the watering grind started. We were one level away from completion and I was hoping that we would be done by the end of spring, so there was nothing to do but water the crops and hope that we planted enough to get all the XP we needed. On day 24, thanks to UI Info Suite, I saw that there would be rain tomorrow, so hopefully this would be our last day of watering the massive crop field. I slept straight through day 25 and was fortunate to wake up to day 26 with a colorful field of crops ready to harvest. We thankfully made it to level 6 with some XP to spare, and because we didn't learn the recipe until the next day, I preemptively grabbed everything we would need to craft the mayo machine and cheese press along with our egg and jar of milk. I woke up on day 27 and crafted both machines and popped the respective products into them, immediately going to sleep so that we wouldn't have to wait for them to finish processing. On the final day of spring, our products were ready and we were able to drink mayonnaise and eat a piece of cheese in 2 hours, 43 minutes, and 25 seconds. Think you can beat me? Well, you're probably right. I would 100% recommend making sprinklers if you were to attempt this challenge. The amount of time that it took me to water all these crops were crazy. I fully believe that there's somebody that could do this faster, and if you want to do it, tag me. I'd love to see you do it. Also, you might be wondering why I didn't use the traveling cart, and I just don't think that's in the spirit of the challenge. You could definitely keep doing rolls on the cart to hope that you get either mayonnaise or cheese, but I think this way is more fun. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing, and thanks for making it all the way through. You're a real one. Have a great day! Bye!